right? So basically, you know that. Sorry, if 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 you want to see the bit. So beta is two. Now this would mean that the return of the stock, okay? Uh, basically, the return of the stock is basically two times of the return of the with the market. I'm talking about the mean. Okay, I'm talking about the mean. All right. Now, if the return of market is one percent, so the return of stock should be two percent. Good. So that should be two percent, right? Now the mean is two percent. It doesn't mean that the return is two percent. I mean, return. I mean, the return is a uh, distribution, right? Because I do not know what would go up or go down, right? So this is probability. So therefore, the return would scale with a normal distribution of two percent. Then uh, standard D is uh, 0 0.02, right? That means it's two percent, and because this is the variance, right? So basically, it follows a normal distribution. Of course, why it follows a normal distribution? I'm assuming that I have sufficient data points. All right, I am assuming that I have sufficient data points that I can conclude that that's normal. If I cannot conclude that that's normal, then I will not not do a forecast. All right. So now, when I have this, it simply means that I can write. Uh, I mean, I can write the z, right? I mean, I can write. I can write the standard normal as. A uh, standard normal of uh, uh, zero and what? And this would be sorry. This is not correct. So that means the sorry yeah. Uh, so oops sorry oops. So this go up here. The probability that z is greater than z, right? Now this guy is equals to the probability of z is. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So my question is, what is the probability that today's closing price is at least one hundred three? That means I'm asking. Correct. Very good. So that means I'm asking, what is my, the probability that the return is greater than three percent? This is my question, right? Now, what is that? This simply means that it's standard normal of three percent minus of two percent, so it's like one percent divided by two uh, percent is greater than zero point five. Do you get it? So this is what I what I want to ask. Okay, and and then after that you can check for for your uh, from the table that this is approximately zero point three zero eight dot 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 dot, which I'm not interested in in knowing. All right. So I will be telling the trader that there exists a, a, approximately thirty percent okay chance that you will hit it uh, above one hundred and three. And so, if you want to bet on it, not I mean, uh, you will have thirty percent chance of winning. Good. Good. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So can I continue? So basically, the answer is here. <laughs> so the answer is here, all right. So it's a, a, it's approximately zero point three one. Yeah, slowly, slowly. Uh, I will I will wait wait for you. Don't worry, slowly. Okay. So um, this is the solution, all right. This is the solution. Now before I start off, okay. I mean before I start off with with uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo. Now I want to give you another interview question from. From a Wall Street uh, a job interview, basically I got this question from the, from the Hurt on the Streets type of book, all right. And basically, this is a question on Gaussian integral. Uh, basically, the uh, I will want you to prove that the integral of e of minus z square is just okay. square root of pi. Okay. Okay, so this is the type of questions that this another questions that you will hear from GIC if you apply for that. So I want to prove I want you to prove that the integral, okay, over a Gaussian, okay, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, over e of minus z square. I want to integrate out that gives you square root of pi. Maybe you want to try it on the piece of paper and see how you how it works. You you learn uh, integration, right? Right, integration. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, one-dimensional integration. You have learned, right? Okay. 
Yeah. So you can try. You can try. All right. Then, then I would I would continue on my uh, on my uh, talk. Okay. So while you try working on that, then I will continue on my mark of shame on the Hello. Okay. Because they are okay. You might come here for a bit more fun, or you might come here just for the dry uh, le 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 lesson. But uh, that's that's very I mean that's very uh, useful. I mean what I'm telling you. Uh, now is very uh, useful because that that is actually the second pillar of your uh, mathematics, which you you all um, completely miss. Now we have this Markov chain Monte Carlo. So I would want to ask the, the question. All right, I want to ask the question whereby what is my probability uh, of this standard normal? Okay, that is greater than zero point five. Of course, I know how to tabulate it from the table, right? I mean, I, I know how to tabulate from a table. I mean, suppose now you forget to bring your table. Okay. Suppose you now you forget to bring a table, then of course you can tell me. Okay. Uh, I uh, I mean I will Google it out, right? <laughs> but okay. Suppose you have uh, uh, you don't have internet, but you have a computer, and you you can write a simple program. Okay. So now I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Okay. So what happened is now you always write something called what you want to measure, all right? So this O is what you want to measure. Okay, this, okay, I mean for this, you really have to uh, cultivate a bit of um, uh, uh, a practice, I mean feeling or the intuition. Now, what we call OZ as the measurement, what we want to call the FZ as the weight. So I want to write in this form. So clearly that FZ is just this, this guy, all right, so I, that means I want to uh, do it that. Then I want to random walk over. So I want to random walk over the, uh, the space. Okay, so I want to random walk over EZ, not randomly. I mean, uh, no, I mean, that's randomly, but not uniformly. All right, but I want to spend more time here and I want to spend less time here. Can you see? Because there's really no point in spending time over at a large Z, right? Because that gives you zero, right? You should spend more time in a larger area, right? I mean, in a larger uh, probability rather than you want to spend more time here, right? I mean, this is, this is how you want, want to go. So this is as important sampling. So now you have an importance weight, all right? And the weight is known as FZ, and basically here I want to choose it to be the Gaussian weight. And the Markov chain basically it, it basically yes memory. So, so the whole process it starts off with something like you have a random point Z one, then from Z one you want to go to Z two, then from Z two then you want to go to Z three, and so on. But not every step you can move. So there are some steps that you cannot move. All right, so. This, this is my, my Markov chain uh, random walk. And basically, you satisfy this thing called a, called a, uh, called a, uh, called a detailed balance. All right? And basically, this is what, okay? I mean, this, this, this is, uh, is detailed balance. Detailed balance is actually the condition for uh, steady state. Or the, uh, I mean, or for the, uh, I mean, for the uh, equilibrium. Because you just think about it. Can I rub, rub it off? Can I rub it off? Yeah. You, I mean, you just think about it. At the equilibrium, what would happen is that suppose that you have, you have five blocks to the left. And you have the, you have five blocks to the right, right? And there exists some chance for you to move from the from the left to the right, and there exists some chance for you to move from the from the left to the right. I mean, the left to the right or right to the left. So there exists something called the left to the right, and there exists something called the right to the left. At equilibrium conditions, you will find that five times the probability of left to the right 
it must be five times the probability of right to the left. Let me just just write a bit better. Let me just take one more step to the uh, to the to the left and one less step on the, on the right. And what you will find is that this guy. This is an equilibrium condition. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? Right, 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 right. Because they are okay. When you have six you, 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 I mean, when you have six you, uh, you, you units, then there are six times of that chance of you moving to the right, right. If you have four units, then you have four times of the chance of going left. So the equilibrium it must be something like it must be something like z i is p of p, p of um, i to j is equals to some weight of z j p of j to i. So this is known as a detailed balance condition. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So that's why you have that. That's why you have a detailed balance equation. And basically this so you can see that that the probability, okay, to go to the right is dependent on the the weights. Can you see that? So your random walk actually is favored more towards a larger weight. That means, that means overall I will spend more time here than rather I will spend time here. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but here you cannot trust the answer. I mean, you, 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 you cannot trust the error because it is uh, truly not independent. Because now uh, they are not independent. Why? Because uh, there's, there's memory. So you can't really trust the answers. I mean, you, you can trust the mean, but you cannot trust the error. Right? Because statistics means what? Statistics means that you have to, I mean, you have to have independent samples, right? But here, it's, it, it's clearly not in the, uh, independent. Okay. I will speed up a bit here. All right. So what happened is that I write the program that implements that. Then what I found is that I find that the sum of the area to the left and the sum of the area to the right. So basically, I just do a mirror. Yeah. So I just do a mirror. So I will expect that the total area to be 0 0.308 times 2, which is 0 0.615 something, right? 6.1. Uh, six, uh, zero point six one seven something, which I basically get the answers here. All right, so you basically you uh, you will have to accept answer. All right, if you have something else, that means you are telling me either you have done something wrong, or mathematics is completely wrong. But I would trust that uh, you have done something wrong <laughs> rather than the mathematics is wrong. Okay, and it will always work because of central limit theorem. So this is the fourth time you will hear the name central limit theorem. That's that important. So now I want to spend more time, okay, into the engineering uh, application uh, uh, engineering aspect, okay, of Monte Carlo method because I'm like running soon, run, running out of time. Um, in so in. So this is known as the quantum engineering, all right? Quantum engineering. Um, why? Because I think there's nothing more in science, okay? That because now uh, we all know that quantum theory is correct. So I mean, there's there's no more uh, questions on the uh, on whether quantum theory works or not. Now the question is how to engineer quantum uh, theory to work for uh, for what you want to work on, right? Okay, so I mean, there's no foundation in science that that we would want to ask, but will be how you want to engineer quantum technology. Now, this is the question. So that's why people uh, have already slowly changed the term from the physics to engineering. All right, and in uh, and in America, 
or in uh, uh, Europe, there are certain uh, there are some certain uh, schools that they have separated quantum uh, physics from the physics. So basically, it's just like you are having a separate uh, uh, department. And basically, when you do Monte Carlo, randomness is everything, right? I mean, I mean the whole assumption is that you would have perfect random number, right? I mean, the whole the whole idea is that I mean the whole assumption was that suppose you have a perfectly random generator, then I could work out those mathematics, right? So, but but the question is that. Um, uh, why are you so sure that these numbers are random? Okay, because I mean, I mean, how could you generate random numbers out? All right. So of course, now one one way is that you just trust us. All right, that we give you a black box. Okay, that's that is known as that the uh, random number generators, but they are nothing but a sequence. All right, sequence. A sequence means that these random numbers are not that random. This these random numbers are actually Pre-known, so they are deterministic, but they are they are deterministic in such a way that it it looks random. <laughs> all, all right, I mean it looks random, and you start the random numbers uh, sequence normally based on the time, maybe uh, based on the current time that you start the sequence. So these are known as random number sequence, and they are actually deterministic. They are quasi very random, but they look they look random. And it actually works, okay. And they're fast and efficient. They normally you can generate a billion uh, random numbers in one second, okay. That there's no problem. And uh, they are used for industrial standards norms, all right, okay. For example, the machine twister uh, random number sequence, okay. So normally, if you call your scope high, or uh, then basically I will be giving you uh, this. This random number sequence, okay, but I will not give you the the perfect quantum uh, sequence because that will not work. Why? Because this 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 type of perfect randomness quantum uh, uh, sequence can only give you uh, like a thousand random numbers per second, but this is way too slow for uh, for efficient uh, calculation. All right. If we, I mean, I mean, the second way is that you get it. From purely from quantum mechanics, okay. One example is that's called the so-called the photon beam, all right? Photon beam splitter. So what is photon beam? It's very very simple. I mean, if I were to be born twenty years ago, right? I mean, I could already make this this money already, right? So it's very very simple. You have a box, then you have a photon that comes in, and there's a split, and so there is a um, uh, in and there's out, so there's a one, there's zero. That means there's a left or right, all right. And then there's fifty percent chance of it going to left and fifty percent chance going to right. And because they are photons, so so by going left or going right, it, you are doing a measurement, okay. And quantum measurements are purely random, so I don't know whether I will go to left or whether go to right. And the quantum theory tells you that that must be perfectly random. And so there exists uh, some group in. Uh, in Europe, which I will not tell you whom, uh, who are very uh, basically who are quite uh, uh, free. So basically, they just really bought this thing and they they test uh, how random the random numbers are, and basically it just found that the randomness of this thing uh, is like a thousand times better than the random number uh, sequence that you, uh, you, you 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 have, but but you still cannot have. Perfect randomness in a sense because you you still need to use a classical de de uh, detector to actually detect the the photons that are coming out from this uh, this uh, uh, this photon beam splitter. So uh, that was what happened. Okay, and so I mean, if you really want perfect randomness, because if you really want no one to screw up your your credit card, okay, you really want to ensure no one to screw up your 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 perfect privacy, then you should be uh, targeting at the quantum random numbers. So, um, but the random numbers that you get from the photon beam splitter will be quite slow because then, um, at, at most current technology, you can get a thousand per second, but not a billion per second uh, compared to the random number generators. So I would say that the 
uh, in this process, then the random uh, uh, generator uh, is the uh, bottleneck of your uh, simulation time. And, and uh, actually in Singapore, there's a center called CQT, so Center for Quantum Technologies, and uh, I was from there, but I already left. So uh, actually in 2013, they uh, managed to get um, 10 million uh, fund from MOE to actually research into randomness. So uh, I think that uh, Alex actually uh, have this group that uh, send this, um, I mean, to send parcels of the random numbers, uh, I mean, I mean, random number shooting beams into space. So what they do is that they want to study how the random numbers uh, generators uh, really behave. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, are they really entangled or disentangled uh, in, in space or not? So I think that, uh, uh, I mean, what they are doing is that they are currently um, sending uh, a lot of packets into space. And then after that, um, uh, I, I think they are currently looking into the into the uh, properties, all right. Or otherwise, you can look at the quantum simulators. Okay, these are the branch that you 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 basically want to want to mimic quantum models, all right. So what is it? It is basically you have a lattice, you have a standing lattice, and you 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 know the stationary wave. Right? I mean, if you come from physics, then you you know the stationary wave when they when they superpose and they form a standing wave, right? So this standing wave um, uh, uh, basically uh, will, uh, will interact with the at atoms, okay, um, that will form, okay, that will instantly form a crystalline order. And so this is known as optical lattice. And um, this was very uh, heavily being, re I mean, researched in uh, 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 Europe in the last decade. And what people came out is totally uh, crazy. Basically, what they want to see is that they want to study this system at some finite temperature. Of course, when we talk about finite temperature, we have to uh, talk about the finite temperature with respect to what, right? I mean, with respect to the energy scale of this system, uh, uh, they would want to study that. And that's known, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, in statistical physics, then that is known as the partition function. All right. So uh, I mean, so when you calculate the partition function <coughs> based on the Boson-Herbert model, some some <coughs> some um, some toy model in um, in uh, quantum many-body systems, then what they found out is that the experimental and the uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulation basically becomes almost identical. So this are the done by experiment. And this was done by my friend in Harvard. Um, basically, they do the quantum Monte Carlo simulation. Then what they find out is that they just try to use exactly the experimental uh, uh, setup data. Okay, you have, how, I mean, you have uh, this amount of lattice laser strength. You have this amount of uh, uh, a wavelength. Then I want to mimic exactly what you do in the experiment, then it found out that it's almost identical. Okay, it's almost identical uh, in the sense that uh, we could safely say that, uh, I mean, we are the one that keeps on challenging the experimentalists. So we are telling the, you know, I mean, if the numbers are wrong, then normally we were telling the experimentalists, hey, hey you have done something wrong, rather than they, <laughs> they come back to us because uh, normally, because uh, quantum Monte Carlo methods, they are uh, numerical exact, all right? So we are that uh, confident of telling you uh, what happened. And basically what we are doing here is that now when you solve, this, solve the Sorting equation, then you can express in terms of Feynman series, which is a single integral, double integral, uh, triple integral, and you can all the way go to the 100th Okay, I mean, you can all the way go to the 100th integral. This is very common in physics, all right? And there exists no other method that you can, uh, that you can do except Monte Carlo. And what happened is that um, uh, when I was in Zurich, I wrote basically, I think um, until now is the fastest code in the world. I think it's faster than the second code by at, at, at least a factor of five. And basically, check that out. Basically, you can easily produce the so-called mod per tool, okay, uh, for this particular system. Then, um, 
uh, basically, we also created a quantum thermometer, all right, and which is currently used uh, as the standard in Max Planck uh, lab, all right. So basically, um, so basically, me, okay, my team. I mean, my uh, previous team, as well as my, uh, 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 as well as our friends from US, basically we formed the so-called fluctuation dissipation for um, uh, millimeter, which, which is used in uh, Max Planck currently. And the quiz, uh, is can you get? Can you prove this? Has anyone got that? I buy you dinner if you can do it. <laughs> can you do it? <laughs> dinner. No one? No one? No one? Okay, then I disclose the answer. So the solution of Chris, basically, all you have to do is e to the power of minus z squared dz. Okay, I created two copies of that, and then I take a square root. So basically, it's z squared becomes z, z one square, z two square. Then I combine that, becomes a double integral. So this is, this is something like dx dy. Now dx dy, we can transform it to r dr d phi. Basically, we can go to polar coordinates. Then after that, this becomes very easy, uh, where, where d phi is just 2 pi, and this becomes uh, the integral of r e to the power of minus r squared. Now, this is very easy. Now, the whole reason why we want to do it, because uh, we want to make use of the, of the Jacobian of, that, uh, of, that, uh, of the system, which is extra r, then it will give you the proof, which is quite simple. Now, it is perfectly fine, all right? When it's perfectly fine to calculate the nth order moment, all right, of the Gauss integral, then we make use of some sophisticated function called the gamma functions in, in, uh, in, in theoretical physics, then it's, it's no more than a few lines of uh, proof. Yeah. Normally, we know that.